Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to Little Known Stocks, the show where I try to prove that being boring and doing your research will make you money. Now, cannabis stocks, they've been all the rage over the past six months. They've gone up, they've gone down, they've gone sideways. Everything's happened. But there's one company, Clever Leaves, that I think has as yet gone largely unnoticed, and I'm about to show you why they're so clever. Now, when you look at cannabis stocks, you can see that a lot of them follow a very similar trend, and, and you see that very clear peak around the middle of February. That was driven mainly by the GameStop mania and a lot of Reddit users buying into cannabis stocks. But also there's a, there's a big trend around, is President Biden going to legalise cannabis at a federal level? Now, you can see all these stocks are moving in the same direction, same trends. That means that no one's really looking at the underlying trend of each company. They're just looking at cannabis overall as an area to pump and dump, stick their money in, and, and you know if it rises, it falls, people win or lose money. But what not a lot of people are doing is look at the fundamentals of each company and picking a stock, which is where we can really add benefit and add value. One other thing that uh, people are really, really excited about is the legalisation of marijuana. And it's been happening steadily across states over many, many years, with the latest being New York. And they've just signed a, a deal to legalise marijuana. They believe it will raise 350 billion sorry, million dollars annually in terms of tax revenues, uh, which they plan to use in rebuilding communities, particularly ethnic minority communities. So that's really exciting. If we look at um, marijuana across the United States, you can see that, that there are 18 states now, including New York. Uh, many, many states across many, many years have been legalising. There's been a steady progression, but particularly since 2019, that's really stepped up, and I, I expect to see a few more in 2021. Now, you can also see that there are a number of states otherwise that, that uh, have legalised medical use of marijuana, and actually it's a, it's a far greater number. And then if we look outside the US, Canada and Uruguay uh, on, on here as both medical and recreational use being legal. Um, Canada's much smaller than a lot of people think, 35 million people, so not really a big country uh, in terms of population. But you can see there are a huge number of other countries down here that have legalised some form of medical use of marijuana. A huge number of countries. So what we'd really want to be looking for is a company that has... Uh, medical grade marijuana and you'll find that all companies that, that are selling marijuana recreationally even have medical grade marijuana but have licenses have a global presence and are starting to roll out into these markets on a medical basis that they can then pivot uh, and go to a more recreational basis if it comes along but what we also want to see is a company that can survive if further legalization doesn't take place and companies that can really make strong profit based off medical marijuana alone So rather than me show you what Clever Leaves do, I'd like to play you a short clip with Carl Detweiler, the CEO. Yeah, well, Clever Leaves was started with a very simple idea, and that is that most cannabis production was first built in places like Canada or the United States, where maybe that's not where Mother Earth would have uh, intended it. And so, you know, rather than play the chess or the checkers game, you know, our, 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 our chess move was to go to places like Colombia and Portugal and build out one of the world's largest producers of medical uh, and pharmaceutical grade cannabis on earth. You know, our operating costs are about 90% lower than that of our peers. And so as the industry evolves, as legalization begins to take hold, not just in uh, at home here in the United States, but also abroad, uh, Clever Leaves is in a very advantageous position to attack the same market that some of the big uh, Canadian names uh, are, are going after, um, and and hopefully do so with a with a nice competitive advantage via its cost structure. Now let's talk about the actual stock uh, ticker symbol TLVR, Clever Leaves Holdings. Now, they've, they're a very, very small cap company for this space, $253 million, and actually one of the smaller caps in the space. If we look at uh, uh, Canopy Growth as an example, you know that they're up at $10 billion. You've got Tilray, you've got some massive companies in this space already, um, most of whom are established in, in the US. We're going to talk about why these guys are different, and certainly they're a, they're a very small market cap, although you are actually paying more of a premium based on their current earnings. So if we think about 
uh, their revenue growth. They grew 55% from 12 to 12.1 million from 7.8 million. So they're, they're trading at, you know, 20 times sales at the moment. So really, um, really, really expensive from a traditional perspective. But you've got to realize that these guys are sleeping giants and potentially they're, you know, they've been doing a lot of work for many, many years, gaining all these licenses and, and you know, able to operate in so many markets. And certainly these numbers will change as soon as they're able to operate in, in the US, in Portugal, in Germany. Um, and so that I'm, I'm not too worried about that at all. It's also worth noting that not all cannabis companies are the same. I mean, we, we tend to class cannabis stocks as cannabis stocks, but you've got various different specialities. You've got therapeutics, um, you've got cultivation or, or you know, growing, um, you've got uh, retail, which a lot of a lot of operators operate in. They call it dispensers. Um, and then you've got business to business. And one of the things to note is that I think Clever Leaves are really alone in the business to business proposition. They're, they're looking at some of these cultivation or retail giants as some of their potential customers, which gives them a bit of a different perspective, a different advantage maybe. Um, and actually they've, they've signed a deal recently with with uh, Canopy, um, if I can find it. Yeah, they signed a deal with Canopy Growth uh, for one year initially to supply Canopy Growth in their Latin American markets. Now it's interesting that it's only for one year. It may be that's that's uh, Canopy Growth thinking, yeah, we can do that ourselves in a year, but it may indeed be Cleverleaves thinking, okay, we'll supply Canopy Growth. Maybe we're not, not getting the the revenue that we would if we were supplying direct or if we were selling in the US market, for example. So maybe they've they've um, stipulated that that's a year long agreement, but there is an option to renew for two additional years there. So really we need to think about them differently as, as all these big guys competing against one another. Clever Leaves could, could be complementary. So let's talk about what happens if the US doesn't open up and become a legalized market and if things you know, stay where they are or, or even regress. So if we look at some competitors, and I'm not necessarily going to call them competitors, actually, they could be customers, potential customers in the future. Let's look at Canopy Growth. So Canopy Growth here in their investor presentation, very much US focused. If we look at Juicy, very much US focused. If we look at Planet 13, US focused. Now let's look at Clever Leaves. So, you know, they've got the USA and Canada as most of their vertically integrated competitors have, but they've also got Colombia uh, and South America. We know they've opened up in Peru and Brazil and they're, they're starting to explore those markets from a medical perspective. But they've also got their base in Portugal and they're, they're establishing a base in Germany as well. And I've heard them recently talk about Israel as, as that's legalized cannabis as well. So they're really considering a global market which some of their competitors are not and you know not being a vertically integrated model not having retail space not having um, massive overheads in order to do so they're very much focused on legislation making sure they're able to sell in these markets when they come on board and and really focusing on business to business uh, and, and maybe supplying some of the companies like canopy as they've recently signed in a in a deal so let's look at the example of Brazil now. And, you know, they haven't got much revenue in Brazil, if any, at the moment. But let's see how they're, you know, two, three, four years ahead of their competitors in terms of opening up that market from a regulatory standpoint. Um, yeah, we're having great success in Latin America. I, I would say, you know, Latin America tends not to even get a page on a pitch deck in, in most cannabis companies. But, you know, mm -hmm. to remind people that there's, you know, 200 million people in Brazil there's no domestic production that, you know, we, you know, are currently competing against. Everything is in an extract format, i.e., you know, matches very well with Colombia's requirement because Colombia does not currently allow us to export flour. I think that changes. Yeah. But right or sell it for, for that matter, right? Exactly. So, um, so and, and, and because it's a very pharmaceutical market in Brazil, uh, it has to be GMP certified according to Envisa's requirements. So we've announced three major partnerships. You know, Verde Med was the most recent. We had one with a company called Green Care, 
and another one called the Entourage Phyto Lab. And I think it's, uh, you know, there, there may be partnerships I'm unaware of, but, you know, that's the most I've ever heard anybody talk about Brazil. And the reason I don't see many people talking about it is because those requirements to accomplish all those different checkboxes are very hard or it's very difficult. And so Cleverly's has done that. And our goal is to make those partners, you know, we're trying to speed their access to market. Right. If they wanted to go, you know, launch a product that they had to grow themselves and manufacture themselves, I mean, it took cleverly four years and a quarter billion dollars to get as far as we have. Now, let's talk about how those global aspirations shake out, and particularly in terms of licenses. Now, you can see they've obviously got a big base in Colombia. This is where their main growth comes from. They've got two and a half million square feet of, it, of existing land, a uh, growth growing land, and that's on six million square feet of land which, which they either own or lease. Um, they've got the option to expand to approximately 73 million additional square feet. So that's a massive amount there. And they, they have all the, all the regulatory standards necessary for the current medical markets in, in South America, which is, which is a small market, but an important one, obviously, to, to operate in that space, particularly having the backing of the Colombian government is, is critical there. Now, if we look at the European markets, Portugal is their base of operations there. They've got 110,000 square feet, so much, much smaller, but they've got greenhouses there as well. And they also have um, these this EU GMP license. Now, this applies to both the product that they produce in Portugal, but also the product that they produce in Colombia. So they can uh, theoretically export product from Colombia to Portugal, uh, which is still dramatically cheaper producing in Colombia versus producing in Europe. And they mentioned down here that only 10, uh, 10 operators in uh, the EU have a license to sell uh, cannabis, and they're the only one that has a license from outside the European Economic Area. So, you know, importing again into that area with a significant cost advantage, I'd, I'd imagine, will be a major advantage to them. Now, furthermore, in uh, Europe, they've also got a, an aspiration to have a base in Germany. So they are operating in Germany at the moment, but they're operating with a partner, Consativa. And Consativa are essentially operating as a customer at the moment. And, and as, we, as we know, Clever Leaves operate very much like a business-to-business -business operator. So they're selling product to Consativa. Sorry, I can't say it. it's, it's a, an awful name. Um, but then they are selling it on, on as the, dis the main distributor. They do plan to open their own uh, their own subsidiary in Germany and um, they're just working up the license to do so but certainly having that that EU GM, uh, GMP license will be will be a, a major advantage to them if they can do that now the, th the last one is the US and this is the one that obviously everyone's talking about it's the most obvious now, they haven't actually sold any product in the US to date and that is a key risk and really can't be understated in terms of the risk that that poses to their business and their growth. Uh, I think they will grow massively without that, don't get me wrong, but that and opening up this 76 million square feet of additional land, 73 million, sorry, that's really critical to the 100x type growth that, that we really want from this company. Now, they have received an import authorization from the DEA. Yes, that's the same DNA, DEA that you see in all the films, um, the Drug Enforcement Administration, so, so the, the, legal, the legal arm of the, of, the, uh, of the law enforcement. They have completed a first medical cannabis shipment into the United States for limited test purposes, and they've also imported CBD. And so really, this is the next big piece of news that, that I want to hear from them. And listening to interviews with the CEO, he's aiming for uh, 18 months to have a full sale of cannabis in the United States market. And imagine that what, what that would open up with 90% fewer, uh, lower cost than your competitors in the US. Imagine if you're a Planet 13 who you know, is, is focused on the user experience rather than the, um, rather than the products as such. 
imagine if you're a, an independent pharmacist who doesn't want to buy from these um, vertically integrated, really high cost uh, companies. You're an independent retailer, you want to go for the cheapest option or at least have a cheap option on your counter. So if they can get product into the US and get a decent distribution throughout the US, the possibilities really are unlimited for that company. And while I think the other markets, even as they are today, will sustain them and will, will drive profit and maybe even justify their current market cap, the United States market, it can't be understated, is the one that everyone wants to happen. And it doesn't matter if it's the existing uh, states that have already legalized, whether it's the existing medical uh, only, medical license only, or whether it's for recreational. Anything in that US market, whether they can, if they can import it from Colombia, they will destroy the competition. I am sure of this. 90% differential in pricing will destroy the competition or the competition may become their biggest customers, in which case, great, you know, everyone wins. So that's the real strength of this stock. It is a speculation play. I can't state that enough. You might get away with holding the current market cap should the, the current markets, maybe Israel comes on board, maybe there's some growth in some other markets. That may happen. But the US is the one that everyone is banking on. Now, as well as cannabinoid products, Clever Leaves also have this company, Herbal Brands. Uh, now, this isn't so much important from a product perspective. They are making revenue from this, but this isn't going to be a game changer. What this does is, it tells us who their potential customers are in future. So should they start importing CBD oil, for example, herbal brands sell to Walgreens. And for those who don't know Walgreens, they are a massive uh, convenience store slash pharmacist. Uh, they're, they're partnered with Boots in the UK, so it gives you an idea of the, what sort of customer uh, they would be. So they are a massive company uh, in their own right. We've also got several um, other vitamin type stores. Um, we, we've got CVS Pharmacy here who are, who are significant as well. So really they've got established relationships in the US already with these customers. If they can get an in with CBD, and that's a big if because some of these companies will already have you know, big CBD customers, so they'll have to do a lot of work, but they already do have significant partnerships with these customers. And, and that kind of tells you, you know, maybe cannabis doesn't legalize, but they get the CBD license. That's also an opportunity as well. And that's Clever Leaves. It's worth noting there isn't a huge amount of information publicly available on this company. So I've tried to do my bit and provide some insight. But if you do have any extra uh, comments, please leave them down below. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. This is my second video. So any commentary, uh, any feedback would be much appreciated. And if people like these videos, I'll keep on doing them. Thank you and have a good day.